So this, for this tying video, we're gonna do um, a little crayfish pattern I tied up a couple years back. A couple reasons I like this fly or, or tied the fly the way I did. Uh, first is is the bead chain eyes or just um, the way that I that I dub around the the eyes in general. Um, the bead chain makes it land light in the water, um, so it's good for it's good for fishing spooky fish or uh, fish that are way up shallow. Um, same kind of concept as the puff bonefish fly. You know that uh, on the puff it is just pink chenille, kind of wrapped figure eight wrapped around the eyes. So um, you can tie this fly with bead chain, like this one. Or you can use uh, dumbbell eyes too if there's there's some water that um, it's a little bit deeper or you see an active fish feeding pretty deep and you need to get the fly down quick. Um, so yeah, you can tie it in a, in a couple of different weights. Um, the hook I use is a, is a Gamagatsu B10, B10S in a size 8. And then for carp, just ma make sure to mash the barb down. Their lips are, are too soft. So... Um, the other reason I like this fly is because you could tie in a bunch of different colors. Um, most of the crayfish around here kind of have a rusty, um, burnt orange kind of look to them. Um, or even they'll, they'll kind of like have a, a, light or a light tan or, or a light olive sometimes too. So you can tie them in a bunch of different colors. Um, Pretty simple tie, um, mainly just uh, some synthetic and a uh, rabbit strip. Caught bass, carp. Um, actually, one of the biggest bass I caught last year was on this fly. So, um, you know, it's not just for carp. A lot of other, a lot of other fish eat crayfish besides, you know, carp. So, and even the, the big smallies will eat small crayfish. So, uh, it's a good one to have in the box. So, for this rabbit strip, um, the rabbit strip tail. I'm not actually using a piece of the hide. I'm actually just cutting um, a little tuft of of the fur off of the hide, and I'm taking about about a quarter inch of material, and I'm just using this stuff up here. I'm not going to be using this hide, so you kind of have to pinch it in your fingers. Kind of like that. And then just pinch off that hide. Okay. And then you just tie in a tail like you would, um, like a woolly bugger. So I'm going to even the tips up here. I don't use the hide because I find that when you, when you cut the rabbit, uh, the rabbit fur off of the hide, it gives it kind of like a more natural taper. You can see that like, you know, I have that, that black line is kind of angling back this way. So it kind of gives the, the fly a natural taper instead of like a blunt, blunt tail. You can see those are the two differences. Same, same. So yeah, I, for this, for this fly, I like to, to cut the, the fur off of the hide. So then, I'm gonna bring in some. Uh, uh, it's an MFC material. I'll have to check what it's called. I'll have a picture of all the materials in uh, in the end of the video again. Um, but a couple strands, maybe four, four or five strands. Not a lot. Any any black flash will work. Lay that down right up on top. And, okay, so here's another little tip. So, 
I want to get varied lengths okay for this material here so normally you know if you were to trim something you kind of groom it back and then cut it for this I want to have different lengths on the end so one thing I'll do is if I'll just kind of push on them you see it kind of bundles them all up and then they all, it puts it at all different angles or all different lengths give it a cut and you can see that all of those are kind of staggered lengths which is what I want okay so then go into put on just uh, one one EP uh, crustacean leg I think is what this is called um, I'm gonna just double it over and I want to get that kind of hot hot tip section in the back so I'll just kind of measure it out and see that's where it needs to be even up the tips get them locked in these I, I want to have the same length And I'll tie my uh, bead chain eyes in. What's cool with this pattern is you can, um, you know, if you want to tie some up a little bit heavier, it's good to do that too. You can use uh, mini dumbbell eyes, work well. Um, this fly particularly works well for me in shallow, shallow water with carp that, um, I don't want to say tend to see a lot of pressure, but you know a little bit more spooky than um than even normal normal carp so it lands soft in the water it always it always uh inverts it always rides hook point up um you really don't have to do much to get a lot of movement out of it too which i think is is huge with carp flies um it's often you know you you see a carp swim over to it and you Give it a long, you know, long slow strip, or even a short little bonefish strip, and they're and they're gone, man. Most of the time, the carp on, on at least my local local stream, they'll eat it on the fall, or um, if it's just sitting, um, cruising fish will we'll often eat it on the fall, which is nice. The, uh, these bead chain eyes obviously aren't as heavy as dumbbell, so it sinks real slow, real slow through the water column. And it gives the chance to fish, or gives the fish a chance to uh, key in on it. Um, and then sometimes, it, depending on the water, I'll use I'll go as light as 4x for carp. Um, you, you know, you lay, I use fiberglass rods, so it you know it it has um, you know a little bit softer tip than a, than a graphite rod. But one thing I'll do with these bead chain eyes, you can see they kind of have a little a sharp edge to them. You can kind of take them, take it and push it on the back of your fingernail and it pops it in. Um, and it's just, you know, just a sharp object sticking out of there. It could, it could harm the fish, it could, you know, your tippet could hit that and break. So just kind of pop them in. And uh, you can see that they're nice and round now. I'm leaving myself a little bit of room. I'm not putting it right up against the eye of the hook. Okay, so it looks pretty good there. You kind of see that we're we're getting closer. And this these next couple steps will go quick. So now um, I'm going to use the carp dubbing, Cohen's carp dubbing as a body. But one thing I'll do with, especially with synthetics, those fibers are so long. And I don't need a ton of dubbing. I mean, you can see how long those fibers are. I don't need a ton of dubbing for this. So I'll just start cutting 
little sections off at a time like that and just kind of let them fall on my desk just little me quarter inch sections at a time and then when you're all done you have a ball of a lot finer material that's easier to use um, and it looks it looks better I see that you know the synthetic material like that real long if it's real long it'll wrap on itself um, and kind of hold the other fibers down so that's why I kind of like cutting up synthetic material excuse my dog gnawing on a bone in the back okay you, know, you can you can do this all over I do them in black um, but mainly this rust color um, you know I would imagine it's it's similar to to like the bone bonefish flies or permit flies that you kind of want to match the bottom of the stream most of the crayfish I've seen on on the stream at least around uh, around my house kind of have an orange tint to them um, or even like a light olive so it's cool to tie them up in a bunch of different colors and a bunch of different weights all right so now I am I'm kind of gonna do that same thing I'm just gonna put some of these rabbit tips in a dubbing loop these tips here so um, I'll take a little bit more this time maybe about like an inch okay you kind of have to groom them to get them to stand you gotta have them stand straight up and I'll take my magic tool put them in the clamp Okay, dubbing loop, yeah, just like that, and this isn't going to be in the picture, but all you're going to do is just make a dubbing loop. Dubbing loop. I'm going to start it maybe about two thirds up the hook, is where I'm really going to kind of start getting that dubbing loop wrapped around the hook. Because remember, you're still going to put some some dubbing up around the, the B chain eyes and up around the eye of the hook. Okay. It's starting to look more like a crayfish now. And the last part's easy. The last part is just doing that same thing with the um, Cohen's carp dub, just cutting off, cutting off a couple little sections. All right, so I'm making a nice tight uh, dubbing rope here, and this step kind of gets overlooked. Um, it's, it's you got to have a tight dubbing uh, dubbing rope because you're putting it around these eyes and the point of of one of using the bead chain is at the fly it lands soft in the water but also wrapping a nice tight uh, dub dubbing rope around those bead chain eyes is going to help it land soft as well so if you know if if some of that dubbing was loose one, your thread's going to be exposed, which uh, 
makes the fly less durable. Um, and two, uh, it, it's not going to make it land nice and soft in the water because it's it's just it's loose. It's it's a loose material as opposed to a tighter material. So, um, and that's really about it. You just wrap it around the eyes a couple times, and uh, give her a little whip here. And that's that. It's a great pattern, man. I caught a ton of carp on this pattern last year. Last couple years, actually. It's a good one. It's not a hard tie. It has a couple steps to it, but it, uh, it's worth it man it's it's a good fly you can crank a bunch of them out it's a fun tie it's it's not one that you know has too many complicated steps this one's pretty basic um, and it's nice because you could tie them in a variety of colors and a variety of weights as well for all kinds of different water depth